I mentioned in the previous videos that I believe that um, in order for society or the state or whatever to intervene to actually restrain someone or coerce them, we generally believe uh, that not only is it necessary for that person's conduct to be immoral, it also has to be disruptive. It has to be both immoral and disruptive um, for us to believe that the state or society has the obligation or the right or whatever to intervene to restrain that person's conduct. If it's just plain immoral, well, generally we just disapprove of it, uh, disapprove as a society. If it's disruptive, in many ways we say that society has to sort of learn to tolerate things that it finds as disruptive but not immoral. In other words, acting just plain eccentrically, uh, saying things that people don't like. Um, blasphemy is the obvious example. A lot of people don't like it when people say shocking things. And, and I don't mean just religious blasphemy. I mean, say, telling a viciously racist joke in public or that sort of thing. Um, generally, uh, the thrust of our society, I find now, is to increasingly say that, well, that's just too bad if you feel insulted by something. Um, or if you feel offended by something. In other words, that's uh, just uh, immoral. It's not actually disruptive, because disruption is uh, uh, something that's a lot more difficult to define. Now, um, this often gets mistaken for what is pejoratively called moral relativism. <laughs> um, I don't think that that's moral relativism at all. Um, moral relativism, in my honest appraisal of those who tend to use that term, uh, is that the position seems to hold that, well, we can't really know anything for sure, so it's best not to judge anybody, and the corollary to that is best not to do anything. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, sure, watch what happens when you do that. Um, so I think that, um, again, uh, getting back to the uh, another video, politics is in many ways, negative utilitarianism. We have to remove harm and disruption, immorality and disruption from society in as much as it is possible. Now, we, I think that most of us make now the starting point of our thoughts that uh, the world is not going to be perfect. So we have something of a insane situation here in which we sort of say, well, we want politics to remove harm and promote the good as much as is humanly possible, but we know that it will ultimately fail. Now, one could say that that's moral relativism as well. This brings me to one of the most interesting and most difficult to understand uh, Eastern concepts of the law and essentially um, why we should, as human beings living in this imperfect world, uh, ever bother to do anything. The world will not be perfected. <laughs> now what? <laughs> uh, do we just sort of say, uh, well, it's nonsensical rubbish and let's just forget about everything because it's not going to be perfected, so what's the point of pushing ourselves towards perfection? Um, or, uh, well, yeah, let's just uh, forget about the fact that it's never going to be perfected and act as though we can perfect it. That seems to be the two polarities these days. Well, there's a third polarity, which I think is very difficult for Westerners to rub their or wrap their heads around. Um, and I think that it's sort of inherent in a lot of Eastern views of the law, democracy, if one could say democracy, justice, this sort of thing. And it's, um, it's in the Bhagavad Gita, although there's traces of it in a lot of other philosophies like Confucianism and everything, um, where Krishna, God, says to Arjuna, the everyman, humanity, it's better to do your own duty badly than to do someone else's well. It's better to fail at your own duty, or even to be destroyed attempting to do your own duty, uh, than to succeed in doing someone else's duty well, or just succeed in doing someone else's duty. That sounds a bit crazy to a Westerner who believes in the inherent 
I wouldn't say perfectibility, but improvability of the world. It's just results, efficiency, that sort of thing that matters. Whereas Gita 335, that's that chapter I just sort of paraphrased, or the quote rather, says, what we have to do with this reality is manage it. That's all. <laughs> uh, this imperfect reality. Forget about trying to find truth or meaning in it. But also forget about thinking that you can just ignore it. You can just uh, rush off to the hills and live as a philosopher, uh, hermit, or whatever. Um, reality is going to keep happening. It's going to keep dragging you into it, no, no matter what. So find something that works for you in this reality and do it to the best of your abilities. That way, in many ways, you've sort of come to terms with reality without taking it terribly seriously. Now, the reason why I think that um, this might be a difficult fit for Western thinking is that, and, and again, I, I mean Western and Eastern thinking in gross sort of stereotypical terms. Uh, Western thinking is reality is what's all around you. Eastern thinking is reality ultimately is just what's in here. So politics... Um, ethics and all this sort of thing is just a way of managing reality, managing the world. It's a way of coping with the world around you and making sure that the externals are, are managed to the extent that you can live real life and ask the real questions and ex do the real explorations which ultimately have nothing to do with what's going on outside of you. As a matter of fact, it's a damaging distraction. I won't say that I completely agree with that point of view, but it strikes me as one that has a greater capacity in the long term to endure than the Western capacity that does have a byproduct of creating, again, I hate to say it, but I believe it to be true, um, angry, frustrated idealists. <laughs> um, I think that uh, the frustrated idealist is a very unfortunate byproduct of Western uh, thinking. And I think it's a lot more damaging than we realize. The 20th century was probably the most bloody century in human history. And I think that a lot of it was to do with, uh, a lot of the bloodiness had to do with frustrated idealism or an excess of impatient idealism on all sides. So you might think that moral relativism or quietism or whatever you want to call that um, might be sort of doing a deal with your conscience or doing a deal with morality. But try and act in the world and do the right thing and watch what happens. Thank you.